A Story of Swords and Fire Ants One year, the size of the armies in the Rapier Ravine battle were so lopsided that I had little chance of reaching the front lines, so I volunteered to marshal. They set me to guarding a huge fire ant nest just uphill of one of the flag points. Because of the odds, the blue flag had been up all afternoon. But, as I stood guard, I saw a group of three dead fighters trudging uphill to the resurrection point. One lingered a bit behind the others, and as he passed the flag point, he stabbed the person holding the flag, and then quietly raised the yellow flag. An impostor had snuck through the lines, and, as a marshal, I could do nothing but watch. As luck would have it, one of the first groups passing the point on the way back to the front included both His Majesty and Her Majesty Norshield. She noticed the color of the flag and pointed out the mistake to the unlucky soul holding the rope. He decided his ruse was up, struck at His Majesty, and died in a hail of blades. Had I not been posted to guard that nest, I'd have followed that fighter back to ensure he got a medal for bravado. That was the only time the yellow flag was up during the battle. A Feather So Bold The Great War was almost at its end. Our kinsmen gathered upon the field for Kingdom Court. Great honors and stories were told, and just awards were handed out. Then, a moment that will resonate in our hearts for the rest of our griffin lives. His Majesty brought forth his hussar wings he wore into battle. His voice roared loudly like a griffin battle cry about the greatness of this kingdom, the pride and love for this kingdom. One by one, with a sharp snip, it began. Tears welled up within my kinsmen's eyes, hearts bursting with pride. For our king was cutting his wings. One by one he handed out a feather to each of us who attended. Norshield marches to war. For a few years now, a maiden has been working diligently to make archery and thrown weapons a visual and exciting thing at Gulf Wars, to match that of one kingdom in particular. For this year, it finally took shape. Glorious banners were made by a talented countess. Tabards were constructed by a diligent team of mercenaries. Well over 40 were made for this glorious moment. Archery tassels were created by hand for each and every archer of Norshield. Even a war marching song was written for this maiden, for this triumphant muster, by a very well-known bard of the kingdom. To war, to victory, the banners waved in the wind as this ferocious group of warriors marched down to the archery field. Bows gripped firmly in hand, while arrows were securely fastened to their sides. The pride filled each of our hearts as we proudly showed that our kingdom had arrived. Northshield bowmen, archers, yeomen, sight the targets that you choose. Eyesight, narrows, knock your arrows. Ready, aim, loose. Following our archer queen's griffin's barbs, at her command, gold feathers drawn, together rank shall wither where they stand. Find the soft parts, wicked cloth yards, hammer down like heaven's wrath. Blooms now forming, crimson warming, foemen from the archer's path. Horns are calling, lines have fallen, cavalry retires the field. Bold queen, our commander, leads the archers of Norshield. Norshield bowmen, archers yeomen, sight the targets that you choose. Eyesight narrows, knock your arrows, ready, aim, loose. A token from the queen. On our travels to a party down the way, we passed the royal encampment, where we found our king at a table playing cards with a group of men, and our queen sitting amongst her ladies watching the torchlight equestrian fun across the road. We approached our queen to say hello and to see how her night was going. After some story sharing and lots of laughter, she pulled me to her side and pulled out an item that resembled a book. She held it in her hands as she told me that it was a bodice book. You put it here on your belt, she said, as she hooked it under and around my belt, and let it hang down towards the ground. It is for you to write down your ideas, inspirations, and stories in, she said. The queen then explained that only a few of these bodice books were made, and each one had different pictures on the front. The one given to me was the one that held her mark. It was a pea pod. 
She explained that because her name is such a mouthful, people just call her P, so she uses a pea pod to represent herself. Very honored at such a great token, I kept an eye on it the rest of the week, making sure it was always at my side. Where there is bacon, there is a way. After evening court, Tomas and myself were heading to the mess hall for dinner, but before we roamed very far, we paused shortly to speak with a friend from another kingdom. Tomas! Our king's voice said from a distance, but Tomas did not hear him. Tomas! Our king shouted again as they grew nearer to where we had stopped. I tugged upon his shirt and said to him, Your king is calling you. Our king then called out to him, I am currently unattended, and there's bacon at the end. We quickly joined their majesty's entourage. We walked to the Calenteer party with them to find bacon at the end. Who knew? After a few pieces, we were asked to head to royal camp to retrieve one pound of bacon they had as a gift for this kingdom. Quickly, we dashed off to their camp to get these great items. Once at the royal camp, we had to convince the royal guards of our intentions and need for the bacon that was in the cooler. Soon after, we found ourselves handing the bacon over to our king to give to the other kingdom, and peace was made that night over bacon. The War Kittens Once the sun set, many of the populace of Northshield gathered at the Green Dragon for the royal hunt. Teams were constructed, one forester, one hunter, and the maximum of six animals. Late in the game, our team was formed. Dimitri was the forester, Rogan was our huntsman, and our animals were Ariana, Mina, Kata, Demona, and Gaia. But this group of animals were not hounds like most of the other teams. Oh no, we were the war kittens. As animals were only allowed to meow to talk to their huntsman or forester, we promptly renamed our forester our cat herder, for he possessed a red dot for us to follow. Katsua was the stag that all teams were after. He was released ten minutes before the hounds were. We were off and wandering around looking for the stag, and we spotted him. Lurking in the darkness, we saw the stag sprint in one direction, as a group of hounds followed soon after. Wow! Meat! Purr. The kitties called out to our huntsman and forester. After some time, Dimitri was able to herd the war kittens back to the green dragon to find out if the stag was caught by another team. True enough, he was. It was said two teams teamed up to bring down the stag that night. Back to camp our team headed, the huntsman, the cat wrangler, the lion, the Bengal tiger, the panther, the leopard, and the Siberian tiger. To our surprise, there was the stag in our encampment, hanging out, waiting for us to arrive back home. Left shoe duel at dusk. Right shoe is for walking, left shoe is for dueling. Count Hagen. It all started late on Sunday night after many folks were finished setting up their camps and started roaming around from group to group. Tomas found himself in Hagen's camp and took a seat near the fire. Everyone was enjoying themselves with many stories and laughter until Hagen offended Tomas by calling him a janitor. This was all a misunderstanding, of course, because Hagen really said ginger instead of janitor. Not that there's anything wrong with janitors. And as we all know, only a ginger can call another ginger a ginger. Hagen, as we all know, is a ginger. This verbal mumble sparked Hagen to challenge Tomas to a duel to defend Tomas's honor. As odd as that sounded, the duel was set to happen that night. This was not just any duel, you see. It is a left shoe duel. Dimitri was Tomas' second, and Katsua was intended to be Hagen's second, but His Majesty Vlad jumped in and said, I will be your second, Hagen. In the darkness on the road outside of camp, they stood back to back as the countdown started. Back still intact, they spun in a circle until the countdown was over. Tomas ducked quickly. Hagen's hand lunged forward. The left shoe was seen flying in the firelight. Tomas threw his left shoe. Both shoes hit. Good! Double kill! About this mighty duel, it was said, it made God cry down on us, as the sky then rained down upon us. The Dingo Whisperer during lunch one day, I was sitting on a bench outside the food hall, eating my food as a dingo wanders by and begs for some food. I watched him go from table to table, bench to bench, with no luck at all. When he arrived to my side, I leaned over to the dingo and looked at him in his big brown eyes and told him, Go to the North Shield encampment. On the far end, you will find a camp with a large fire in the center. Go there, and you will find kind people who not only have doggy treats for you, but there are potatoes and other droppings on the ground, just waiting for some lucky dingo to come along. Go now while they're still there. 
and with this conversation the dog cocked his head and lifted one ear, then stood up and dashed off into the direction of the camp I spoke of. Later I did find out. He did indeed go to that camp and did get food and love. The Payment the morning showers dissipated and we headed south of our camp, toting two bottles, two pouches, one bag, and one chest. When we arrived at Campania de Ombra camp, we stood where the fire had burned brightly the night before. All members that were on site were present and we began. First, we presented the two bottles of mead that were made by Robert the Stout and Sven. Next, it was time for the two bags, which held tokens, to show who they fought for. These I created myself. They were garnet jewels with black wood beads, followed by one evil eye bead, then at the very bottom there was a sparkling gold bead. Fourteen were made. These tokens were handed out, and some placed them in their hair or on their earrings, belt favors, or even mug rings. From there we presented the chest. I took out the scroll that was made of hand-dyed parchment, rolled and bound in a red string, sealed with three knots and one bell. It was handed to Dimitri to open, then handed back to Tomas, who then read the story-slash-lore of the item, that they have yet to know was in the chest. Once we got to, or was it, I opened the chest to reveal the Unity Diamond. They were all abuzz. They loved it. It has been said there will be a shrine built for their new shiny. After this, we gave one bag of handmade cheese by Liz, the lizard who speaks for the cheese. It was said that this is one of the very best payments for their allegiance in a very, very long time. The year Norshield was Polish. It was 2019. The year Norshield showed up Polish and confused everyone. The hype leading up to it spread through the kingdom. It was a time when teachers, artists, fencers, fighters, cooks, singers, revelers, cavalry, archers, royalty, and everybody else donned their wings, i.e. Zupons, wings, or Duke Vlad's own clothing, and invaded Gulf Wars with a tank. Yes, you heard that correctly, a tank. Those who experienced it will never forget it. It was inspirational. It was unifying. It was the year of the Hussar. It was a Gulf War full of magic moments, one that will be prominent in the minds of those who did and did not attend. For the stories traveled far, and the memories and songs of our people touched everyone. The dreamers sleep and twine. The rooster cries a warning, and the sun is soon to shine and melt away. A vision fade. Dreamers rise and start the day to serve for North Shield's honor, Duchette. With these hands, which chill the field. So we 
it will grow and these hands they serve to bring to birth this beautiful dream upon the earth as we look into the future think what more can we do to keep the dream and nurture our young to dream anew to lead the way into the fray dreamers rise and start the day to serve the north shields honor to chere with these hands which chill the field and so to bring to birth this beautiful